السلام عليكم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اللهم لا علم لنا الا ما علمتنا انك انت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما تعلمنا وزدنا من فضلك علما وعملا وقربا وتقى يا رب العالمين ربنا لا تؤاخذنا ان نسينا او اخطانا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا اسرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا انت مولانا تنصرنا على القوم الكافرين اوكي بسم الله So I've been asked to speak about this topic of revelation. Firstly, what is revelation? Uh, the ulama mentioned uh, revelation is al-i'lam al-khafi. So telling someone something, informing someone of something in a way which is not easily, which is not apparent, right? So for, and it's uh, so wahi. That's the definition of wahi. It can be of many forms. For some, for some individuals, it is actual revelation. Where Allah Azza wa Jal makes a person a, a prophet, and He gives him instructions. And Allah Azza wa Jal also refers to um, speaking to members of His creation with the same term, "Awhina ila nahl," and we inspired the bee. It doesn't mean bees; we mean prophets. Um, this is quite literally, I mean, the greatest blessing Allah Azza wa Jal has given us, because if you follow, if you follow. The implications of this blessing, the wahi is is a set of instructions, and what Allah Azza wa Jal has uh, has told each and every one of us, what He's actually instructed us to do is go to paradise. That's a, that's the khulasa, that's the summary of what He's told each and every one of us to do: enter paradise. How? Do this. Don't do this. This is Allah's generosity upon us. So He's um, so uh, the wahi. Um, the final time the Wahi came down to the, to the final messenger, um, as you all know, it was uh, in the 40th year of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. News of his news of his prophethood was all over the Ummah. Ummah, the Jews were very well versed, versed with it. And the Christians were also expecting him. Um, the pagan Arabs didn't really know. Um, it was known; people had heard about it. But the pagans didn't really have an appreciation of revelation because the last prophet they'd had, Sayyidina Ismail, was quite literally about two, three thousand years before. So they didn't really know the implications of this. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his entire life, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the two most prominent characteristics he was known with were al-sidqu wa al-amana, truthfulness, never lied. And complete utter honesty, as we see the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he was forced to flee and uh, uh, escape from Mecca to to prevent himself being killed, those people that we found out that those people that had actually wanted to kill him actually went and left their prized possessions in his uh, with him, so he can look after them for him. So everyone trusted him, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wahi obviously is not something that is earned. You can't do lots of azkar and lots of uh, salawat uh, and try and get wahi. No, it's rather it's a gift that Allah bestows upon people. Prophets are created for that function. They are created prophets. Alayhi salatu salam. So what happened in this situation? So let's look at the event first, and then we look at some of some of the verses of the Quran regarding it. So. Uh, so what we'll do, we'll, we'll look at the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari uh, where his wife uh, Sayyida Aisha told us about revelation. So um, she said, أَوَّلُ مَا بُرِئَ بِهِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ مِنَ الْوَحِي الرُّؤْيَا الصَّالِحَ فِي النَّوْمِ The first stage of revelation that was given to the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم was dreams that, um, that manifested, dreams that became true uh, in the next day. So why this? Why not just say, you know, why not just say, here's the Quran, there you are, here's this task. No, revelation is something tremendous, and people need to be prepared for it. And especially the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "لو أنزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله." He said, if we had revealed this Quran to an, to a mountain, to a mountain, you'd have seen it. خاشعا 
full of reverence, mutasaddi'an, exploding out of its intense fear for Allah. Khashya in Arabic is the strongest form of fear that you can feel. It's the strongest word for fear. Khawf is different from khashya. And khashya is very intense. We have also a description of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when many of the sahaba, one of the sahaba was sat with the Prophet and the thigh of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was on top of the thigh of the sahabi <coughs> and uh, 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 some verses of the Quran were revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This sahabi literally felt like his leg was going to be crushed because of the weight now of the leg of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on his leg. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was once on, on a camel and it collapsed when the wahi came. So the wahi is not just bits of information coming down. There's something tremendous and significant about it. <coughs> Excuse me. So to prepare the Prophet for this sallallahu alayhi wa for a duration of six months, he, he was seeing dreams. He'd see a dream and then the next morning, whatever he saw would actually come about. So she said, فَكَانَ لَا يَرَى رُؤْيَا إِلَّا جَاءَتْ مِثْلَ فَلَقِ الصُّبْحِ So every time he saw a dream, uh, it, it, would, it would become cle- clearly apparent. مِثْلَ فَلَقِ الصُّبْحِ What she's saying is when you look at the horizon, you look at the east just before Fajr starts, it's completely dark. And then when Fajr comes in, when the dawn comes in, it's, there's brightness after intense darkness. It's very clear on the horizon. So he, she's saying that the, the extent of uh, the accuracy of the dream was like that. It's like going from darkness to light. 100%. Uh, that's what she said, radiallahu anha. This, this lasted from Rabi'ul Awwal to uh, Ramadan. And then in Ramadan she said, Hatta ja'ahu al wa huwa fi ghari hira. Until it continued until the truth, meaning the message, came to him when he's in the Ghar of Hira. He's in the cave of Mount Hira, which is also known as, as uh, Mount Noor, the mountain of light now. Um, <coughs> many people have visited it and you know, it, it's quite easy to see the images of what the actual cave was and it's quite secluded. You, know, you, can, see, you can see the Masjid al-Haram from there, uh, but it, it's pretty far away. So he's completely alone and he's there. What was he doing there? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam you have, to, you have to see that the Prophet ﷺ was a person who he felt pained by the corruption of his society. He saw the wrongs that were going on when, when girls were buried alive and you know, when, when just people just wronged. Right? He felt this pain. So as the years went on, he felt like you know, he wanted to do something but what? Like a human being on his own, you, know, you don't know what to do. So it, it, it was this pain that was very alive, very much alive within him, sallallahu alayhi wa concern for people. Then, he developed, an, he developed a, a longing to be alone, to be with Allah. Right? So what would he do? She, she said he went, to, <coughs> uh, he, went to, he, he went to the cave of Hira, and he would, he, he, he'd be there, yatahannath. What was he doing? Yatahannath. Uh, Imam Ibn Shihab al-Zuhri explained this word as وَهُوَ التَّعَبُّد that He was actually worshipping Allah التَّعَبُّد here, we don't know what he was doing We don't know was he the, 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 Most of the acts of worship that uh, the Prophet Ibrahim and the Prophet Ismail taught their descendants were gone People just lost, lost track of them, they didn't know what, what, what was there Except for the rites of Hajj Hajj was well documented, well known But they changed it so the actual act of worship, we don't know what he was doing. He was doing, he was doing something uh, to, to draw closer to Allah. So he's in this, he's in this cave, uh, and anyone know the date? Silence. When, when was this? The date. Sorry. The date was the 17th of Ramadan. Um, Allah Azza wa describes uh, uh, the date, the anniversary of this date as Yawm al-Furqan, which is actually the, the same day as the Battle of Badr. The Battle of Badr happened on the 17th of Ramadan and Yawm al-Furqan, the day which when, when truth and falsehood were completely distinguished and separated. Right? So it was this, the 17th of Ramadan. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He's in the cave. 
and he's doing his act of worship and, and suddenly the, the angel Jibreel comes. Imagine never having, you know, imagine just being somewhere alone at night and just another person just turns up out of the blue. It's a shock. Let alone an angelic being, a being who you've never seen. You can't, you know, so it, it was a very shocking experience. And the angel Jibreel went up to him and he said, Iqra. So Iqra can mean a couple of things. It can mean read or it can mean recite. So there's an ikhtilaf of the scholars what it means. But the response of the Prophet was, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ma ana biqari. Ma ana biqari. Which he was saying, I cannot read. I cannot read. Right? Reading for any of us is considered a perfection. It's a quality you want to have. Why? Reading is the tool of learning. If you, if you can't read, then you can't really learn very much in today's world. For the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, him being an Ummi, Ummi, when the term an Nabi al Ummi, when you say that about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it's what they say in Arabic, an Nisbatu il al Umm. It's a connection, it's, it's saying someone is, is just as he was the day he was born, unable to le- read, read and write. So, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did not need to read. Because A, first, the, the, the society, in Arabian society, not many people could read. It was a handful of people or, and write. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had no need because what he needed to know and more, he was taught directly from Allah Azza wa Jal. I mean, for example, you've got a Mus'haf, you've got a copy of the Qur'an, and I can sit here and I can flick through it and I can tell you about this verse and that verse. But you can have someone here who's memorized the entire Qur'an. Right. His working knowledge of the Qur'an is maybe a thousand times greater than what I can hope to achieve with the book in front of me. Why? He's got it all there. He can access it, he can see the entire context from beginning to end, he, he can go to any point. I have to find it. Right? So just memorization is superior to, to learning, to reading. So the Prophet وسلم, all this knowledge that came to him, was, it, it was actually a greater miracle for him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam To be an ummi And we'll see another element of the miracle shortly So the angel said Read and he said Ma ana I can't read Right It's not a question What shall I read Right The Arabic language doesn't allow this I'm going to Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani So it's not a question um, So um, <coughs> So he said فَأَخَذَنِي فَغَطَّنِي فَغَطَّنِي حَتَّى بَلَغَ مِنِّي الْجَهَدِ so he said, he came, he got me, and he squeezed me until I reached the limit of my ability. He thought, literally as he says, I was afraid for my life, according to one interpretation of the scholars. He felt that he's being squeezed to the point where he can physically can't handle it. Then the angel let go of him. I can't read. So he squeezes him a second time. Let's go of him. I can't read. So he squeezes him a third time. And then he says, Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Beautiful words. And, you know, uh, mashallah, there's, there's a lot of people here that understand Arabic. When you, when you see, when you can understand the, the Quran in Arabic, with its, you know, with the balagha and the nuances of the meaning, it's powerful. I was in a bookstore once, borders or something, and I reached on the bookshelf, and I just took a book off, turned it to my face and I put it back. Literally, I, I looked at it for less than half a second. And it felt like I was hit in the chest. Uh, it was a translation of a verse in the back. وَبِالْحَقِّ أَنزَلْنَاهُ وَبِالْحَقِّ نَزَلْ Is it too long? More. So, he said, with the truth we have sent it down and with the truth it has come down. That's what some people interpret it as. Al-Haqq in the Qur'an has various meanings. It comes from the word Haqq al which is something circular. So the khulasa, the, 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 the end point of its meaning is, the Haqq in the Qur'an is that with a wisdom, a surpassing huge, tremendous wisdom uh, and a great purpose. So Allah says, خَلَقَ اللَّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ بِالْحَقْ Allah created the heavens and the earth with a tremendous purpose, full of wisdom. So. It has a real power, you know, when you understand the Qur'an in Arabic, it can really shake you right to the core. So, he says, اِقْرَأْ بِسْمِ رَبِّكَ الَّذِي خَلَقْ Recite, read, 
in the name of your Lord who created. So the very first thing, uh, the very first thing Allah Azza wa tells us in this verse. Remember, this is the first verse of the Quran. He's reminding us of, he's giving us a, re- a reason why should we worship Him. Dimada, why? So he said. He says, Iqra bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq Recite, re- recite in the name of your Lord who created Now the word Rabb, what does it mean? It com- it's connected to the word Tarbiya Where Allah takes you from one stage to another stage to another stage to another stage Until your eventual end result It's taking a person from uh, a lower state to a higher state by degrees Perfection The word also has a meaning of care, love, favours Right, so the, a good translation may be your caring Lord or your loving Lord, and so what? So why should we worship Him? Alladhi khalaq. One of the uh, poets of our time he said, "Jalla qayyumul wujudi lana bil ijad ijad." How perfect is the the one who keeps all of existence going? He 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 blessed us with the blessing of just creating us. Just to be alive is one of the greatest blessings you can imagine. No person with the right mind would just want to stop existing. Even, even if you take a person who's depressed and he's suicidal, it's only because of his illness. If a person is of sound mind, no. You see a car coming towards you, your natural reaction is to get out of the way. So Allah is saying, recite. Why? Why worship him? Because he created you. خلق الإنسان من علق So the first thing he does, he gives you a reason why to worship him. Then he gives you a reason this really is from Allah. خلق الإنسان من علق So Allah created the human being from what he call an alaq. An alaq is literally in Arabic, it's something that sticks onto something else. And there are detailed descriptions of the stages of the fetus uh, mentioned in the Quran. And up until 34 years ago, it was, there was no way for people to know this. Until the, the electron microscope and these things were developed. To the point that I think uh, in the 90s, a man called Maurice Bukai, or some French expert in this field, when he read the verses of the Quran, he accepted Islam. Just on that. Forget everything else. Just on that. So then, for example, so he said, so the, so the second verse is, is showing you there's a piece of information of the ghaib which no one else can know. Okay, I'll speak louder. Okay, so there's information uh, about the ghaib. So immediately you've got a proof. Allah created us uh, from an alaq. No one can know this information at that time. Iqra wa rabbukal akram. Recite. And walhal. So this is a hal. Walhal al aam. Walqaid al aam. Rabbukal akram. Your Lord is the most generous. At every moment He's showering blessings on you. Right now your heart's beating, you don't even know about it. Right now there are over 200,000 moving working parts in your eyes and you're not even aware of them. You're just seeing. So, he says, and recite in the name of your Lord, Al-Akram, the most generous. The one who taught the human being through, through the pen. These are really powerful verses. If you think about this, right? If it wasn't for that pen, he couldn't have told me. <laughs> he couldn't have told me this message. A pen is one of the greatest blessings we have. If it wasn't for the pen, none of us would be here in this situation right now. Why? A pen is something you use to transfer the knowledge of one generation to the next generation, and then they transfer that knowledge onto a coming generation. And they transfer it onto the next generation. Imagine if you had to rediscover everything, every generation. There's only a, a fair certain amount of things you can tell people by mouth and they can learn them. Imagine having to rediscover it all. What Allah Azza wa Jal did, He gave us an instrument to document it. Alladhi allama l-insana ma lam ya'lam. Or everything which the human being is unaware of, Allah has taught him. What he doesn't know is come to him from Allah. So these are all strong reasons to worship Allah. So it's very powerful these, to choose these verses as the first verses of Revelation. So, <clears throat> so then he says, 
she said, said Aisha, فَرَجَعْ بِهَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَرْجُفُ فُعَادُهُ His heart is beating. He's panicked. صلى الله عليه وسلم feeling extreme. He said, لَقَدْ خَشِيتُ عَلَى نَفْسِي Yes, yes. Further on. فَدَخَلَ عَلَى خَدِيجَةَ بِمْتِ خُوَيْلِ رضي الله عنها فقال زملوني زملوني cover me cover me right he needs some he needs to feel supported at this point so she covered him up and when he calmed down he said لقد خشيت على نفسي so Ibn Hajar says there are 12 أقوال on this there are 12 positions of the ulama what does it mean what was he scared of and he said that Ibn Hajar says the strongest one is that he says he feared for his life or he feared becoming ill or having a prolonged illness because of this. This is not something you normally see. And so she says, Kalla, no, by God, no way. Stop, you know, stop thinking this. Allah will never let you down. فَإِنَّكَ لَتَصِلُ الرَّحِمُ وَتَحْمِلُ الْكَلِّ Now she's giving reasons why. You see the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he wasn't a normal individual and then all of a sudden revelation comes. No. His qualities of perfection Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were there throughout his life فَإِنَّكَ لَتَصِلُ الرَّحِيمُ You keep good, good ties with your family members, relatives And everyone knows this is something hard, right? Your relatives are usually something to struggle, you struggle with وَتَحْمِلُ uh, الْكَلْمُ And people that are a burden, people that no one else can support, you support Right? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam وَتَكْسِبُ الْمَعْدُومُ this is an interesting phrase, this. Kasb means to go earn something, go earn some money. What, normal, what people normally do is they want to go and earn some money when the opportunity comes. A ma'doom is someone who has nothing. So it's as though she's saying, when other people go off to go earn money, you go earn the appreciation of someone who has nothing. How? By giving him. Right? You, you go help them out. You, you, you sort them out financially and it's as though that person's great, uh, gratitude comes to you that's all he gets out of it right وَتَكْسِبُ الْمَعْدُومُ وَتُقْرِي ضيف and you honor your guest for an Arab a guest was three days minimum a man could come to your house sit down and you had to watch out look out for him and take care of him for three days before you can even ask him his name there are many famous stories of this <coughs> One of the Arabs who's famous for his generosity, Hatim al Ta'i, he had a famous horse, very fast horse. Arabian horses are smaller, they're not like Shia horses here, they're very fast. So a man heard about his horse, so he went to see Hatim and he knocks on his tent and he walks in. Hatim sits him down, entertains him, he says, I'll be back. And he goes to find something for him. And he's trying to find him something to, to feed, but he doesn't have anything at this point. So he gets his horse and he kills it. <laughs> he slaughters the horse and he feeds the man for three days. Then after the third day he says, you know, so who are you? And uh, what are you doing around here? He said, oh, my name is so and so. I've come to see your horse. <laughs> he said, you've been seeing it for three days on your plate. So, <laughs> right, but, so uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَتُعِينُ عَلَى نَوَائِبِ الْحَقِّ all sorts of difficulties that afflict people, you are there helping them. So you can see the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam his akhlaq, his care for others was always there. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So then, <coughs> then she says she took him to um, to her to her cousin Waraka ibn Nawfal. Waraka ibn Nawfal was an old man. Possibly in his 80s or 90s. He, he was blind and he'd become a Christian and a scholar of Christianity many years before. And she said, she said to him, to the Prophet ﷺ, tell him, what did you see? He said, uh, he, he told him and he said, <coughs> and uh, Waraka ibn Nawfal said, هذا الناموس الذي نزل الله على موسى This is the namus. What does namus mean? Namus is someone who keeps it or, or carries a secret. You give someone a special mission, he yeah, keep it secret. So Jibreel alayhi salatu is is this angel who's given the message to give go to the Prophet. So uh, he said this is just the secret bearer who, who was sent down to Musa alayhi salatu 
And then he says, Ya laytani fiha jidha'an. A jidha is a young animal, like a young goat or something. He says, Oh, if only, if only within me there was fresh life, vigor, youth. Right? Why? Laytani akuna hayyan idh yukhrijuka qawmuk. If only I was alive and your people chase you out. And then the Prophet, the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Awa mukhrijiyya? They're going to take me out? He said, yes. Everyone who's brought a message like you finds that he has enemies. Not because he's bad, not because he does anything wrong, because people have ulterior motives. The people in power want to stay in power. There you have all these rich people of Quraysh. They've got the tourism business. People coming from all over, all over Arabia used to worship their particular idol which has been placed in the, in the Kaaba. And they think, well, if we get rid of all these idols and we just worship one God, then we're going to lose business. So, no. And that's what it was. So, this is what happened with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, this is the event when the revelation first came. Let's just look at this thing. So, these first verses, Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Allah Azza says, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr. Indeed, we have sent, that, sent it down. It. Sometimes, when something so great and an import, an important, you don't need to mention what it is. And because the previous verse is Iqra' bism rabbika ladhi khalaq, Allah says, Inna, indeed, we, we as in the royal we, the king, the king doesn't refer to himself as me. He says we to show how great he is. Indeed, we have revealed it in the, during the night of destiny. Qadr. People have different understandings of what does Qadr mean? Does it mean power? Does it mean worth? Does it mean destiny? The Rajah, the strongest opinion according to the, the scholars, is that it means Qadr, destiny. Right? This is the night. Inna anzalnahu fi laylatin mubarakatin. And then, Fiha yufraqu kullu amrin hakim. In Surah Dukhan, Allah Azza says, uh, Indeed, we revealed it in a truly blessed night. And every wise matter is apportioned, distributed. It's on this night that Allah Azza sends this beautiful revelation and gives the instructions to, uh, to the angels to carry out for the coming year. And uh, so they know how much risk you're going to get, who will live, who will die, who will be born. The matters of destiny are, 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 are mentioned to them. Another position which is equally valid is when they say um, it's a night, night of worth, significance, tremendousness. This night is amazing. There's no other night like it. And look, look how Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, just look how he, he, he talks about it. Inna anzalnahu fi laylatul qadr, wa ma adraka ma laylatul qadr, laylatul qadri. Khairu min alfi shahar. So, if I said to you, the Prime Minister came to my house, and I said to the Prime Minister, come in, and I sat the Prime Minister down, and I gave the Prime Minister some tea, and I talked to the Prime Minister for half an hour, you're going to get bored of me saying Prime Minister, Prime Minister, Prime Minister, right? So why would I do this? If I was talking about, or if someone was talking about a woman they loved, Layla, as Arabs used to say. You know, the guy who's in love is like, oh, Layla, she came and Layla was wearing something amazing and Layla, she looked like this and I was just talking to Layla. What's he doing? He keeps going on about his beloved, right? Because she's important to him. Allah Azza is doing the same thing. Al-Idhharu fi al idmar As the scholars of, uh, of Tafsir say, it's in a situation where you should mention a pronoun. If I said, um, Brother Yusuf came and he gave me this slip and then he went to and he sat down this is normal but if I say brother Yusuf came and then brother Yusuf gave me this slip and Yusuf walked off and, he, and then Yusuf sat down you're going to get bored of me talking so the whole point is inna anzalnahu fi laylatil qadr and this tremendous night of destiny and worth we revealed it wa ma adraka ma laylatul qadr and what after long, long searching and trying to find out what it is, what will explain to you what Laylatul Qadr is? Laylatul Qadr. Again and again, how powerful is this? Laylatul Qadr, khayrun min alfi shahar. It's much better than even a thousand months. Some of the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, uh, were told by the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa about a man who spent a, a thousand years in jihad. 
and they were like a thousand, sorry, a, a thousand months, which is 84, 83 months, uh, 80, 83 years and, and four months or so. And they were like a thousand months, you know, this is a lifetime. And they were like, well, how can we even achieve, get part of what these people have? So Allah gave us this night, right? And and then الْمَلَائِكَةُ to فِيهَا بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِمْ The angels come down uh, with the permission of their Lord. And what we understand from the Arabic here is the permission here means that the angels actually want to come down. But they can't until they get permission. They're wanting to come down. This is something we don't really reflect on. But the angels are actually beings that actually care for humanity. Right? And they, they constantly pray for us. They constantly make dua for us. Those that hold the throne of Allah, and they're constantly making dua for us and the other angels. So then the angels want to come down. When they get permission, they do. Then the surah continues, perfection it is, peace, security. Hatta matla'i al-fajr, right up until the end of fajr. So hatta in Arabic is <coughs> istiqsa' al meaning when so the verse says that Laylatul Qadr does not end uh, when Fajr starts, it ends at the end of Fajr, at sunrise. That's when it ends, right to the end of the, po- the end point. So, this is the tremendous book. So, this is why in the, in the Quran, the Ummah has generally always come back to the Quran in Ramadan. Why? Right? Back to the source, back to connecting ourselves with it. During the rest, the rest of the year, Shaitan is, you know, trying to get us away. But the end, uh, the, you know, Shaitan can't affect us in this month. So it's, it's something that we need to do. So you make a plan and you try to get a relationship with the Quran. And something about w- with reflection, thinking about what is the Quran? What is Allah saying to me? What is He saying to me? Thinking about this. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam subhanahu rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.